Welcome to the Airlift Workshop, where you get expertise from the air suspension specialists, keeping you on the road and in top condition. Today, we're installing a Load Lifter 7500XL kit on a 2019 Ford F450. Remember, this overview doesn't replace your installation guide. Grab yours out of the box and let's get started. We'll start by assembling the air springs. Install the swivel elbow fitting, tightening to finger tight, plus one and a half turns. Place the roll plates on the top of the air springs. Insert carriage bolts into the square holes on the upper brackets. Then secure them to the air springs using hex bolts, lock washer, and flat washers. Push the brackets as far forward as possible. Flip the assemblies over and set a roll plate onto the bottom of the air spring. Install the lower bracket cup onto the lower bracket main plate using a carriage bolt. Cap with a flat washer and nylon lock nut. Snug the bolt, but leave loose enough for the bracket to move freely in the slot. Insert two carriage bolts through the square holes in the lower bracket main plate. Set the lower bracket assemblies onto the air spring and attach with two hex bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. Be sure to push the lower bracket as far forward as possible. Select the appropriate lower leg adapter for your specific vehicle based on the diameter of the axle. To do this, use a tape measure to determine the circumference of the axle and divide by pi. Consult your installation guide for your specific part number based on this calculation. Attach the brace to the lower bracket with a carriage bolt, nylon lock nut, and flat washer. Torque the nylon lock nut. Next, raise the truck with a floor jack and support the frame with safety stands. For filming purposes, we're using a drive-on vehicle hoist. Drop the axle low enough to later set the air spring assemblies into position between the frame and the axle. Unbolt and remove the jounce bumper assembly from both sides. Remove the clip-in studs by prying on the hinged end with a screwdriver to release. Pull all four out of the frame. Next, install the universal nuts into the frame rail, lining up the holes in the frame and the threads in the nuts so that a bolt can be installed. Install the upper chassis bracket onto the frame using button head cap screws. Then, insert carriage bolts into the upper chassis bracket. Be sure that the large cutout on the side of the bracket is inboard of the frame rail and the slotted hole in the center is forward. Torque the hardware. Set the assemblies into position on the axle so that the lower bracket cup nests on the jounce bumper strike plate. Push the lower bracket so that it is flush against the leaf spring stack and both flanges on the lower bracket are locked around the stock U-bolts. The ABS sensor line is attached to the axle with a clip on the brake line bracket. Remove this clip and zip tie the line to the brake hard line to keep it away from the lower support leg. Install the U-bolts around the jounce bumper strike plate and insert through either set of holes on the lower bracket. Cap with flat washers and nylon lock nuts. Snug the bolts evenly. Set the lower clamp bar over the carriage bolts under the axle and attach with flat washer and nylon lock nuts. Evenly torque the lower clamp bar hardware. Torque the U-bolt hardware. Snug the nut that holds the lower bracket main plate and lower bracket cut together to finish the lower bracket installation. To install the driver's side upper brace, Remove the rearward fifth wheel bracket hardware and set it aside. Locate the two M10 bolts holding the brake line bracket to the frame and unbolt both. Pull the bracket away from the frame. Install the included threaded stud into the rearward threaded hole. Leave about 1.2 inches protruding from the frame. Align the upper bracket on the frame and thread the included M10 flange nut onto the stud. Put the factory fifth wheel bolt or the included hardware through the frame on the bracket. Thread the matching nut on the bolt, but do not fully tighten. Align the upper air spring plates with the upper chassis braces. Secure a flat washer and nylon lock nut over the carriage bolts. Torque after all hardware is tightened hand tight. Zip tie the axle vent tube to one of the brake soft lines in order to keep it out of the way of the air spring assembly. Now pick a convenient inflation valve location. You could use inside the gas cap access door, inside the rear wheel wells or the license plate or rear bumper area for securing the inflation valve. You may need to drill a hole. Install the Schrader valve in its chosen location. Place a nut and star washer on the inflation valve and push it through the inflation valve hole. Use a rubber washer, flat washer and nut to secure it in place. Then twist on the valve cap. 
When cutting air lines, never cut from the side or with wire cutters. You'll leave a jagged edge and ruin the hose. Instead, use a sharp razor blade or hose cutter to get a square, clean cut. It is recommended that the airline be routed along the top of the frame, then down to the fitting. Secure the airline to the frame or where needed using zip ties. Lastly, attach the metal heat shield to the exhaust where it's closest to the air spring using hose clamps and slide the airline thermal sleeve over the airline and place it where the airline is closest to the exhaust. That does it. Remember, you can find more information about all of our products at airliftcompany.com and our knowledgeable customer service team is always just a phone call away. Thanks for joining us in the Airlift Workshop.